I should make another Necromunda video. Maybe a lore video about House Escher. Hello friends, I'm Rob, this is Digital Wastrel, and this video is my top 10 cool bits of lore from the House of Blades book. House of Blades is the Necromunda supplement slash codex for Escher Gangs, and as well as having rules and such, there is also some cool lore for everyone's favourite Lasgun ladies. So let's dive right in. Number 1. The Weird Sisters like all of the House of books, House of Blades includes a section describing various famous gangs of the House Escher. The first of these famous gangs is the Carrion Queens, who are actually the named example gangers from the build instructions. Their story also name checks the Goliaths from the build instructions. Are these named from the home campaign of someone in the design studio? I kind of hope so. The Weird Sisters are another gang that's mentioned. They apparently dress all spooky, have like uh, witchy talismans in their hair, and generally act like every day is Halloween. Every good gang needs a good theme. Then you get to this bit. Gangers and hivers seek Jera and her weird girls out if they want help with supernatural matters, like getting rid of a troublesome helot cult, or hunting down a bloodthirsty hive vampire. Bloodthirsty hive vampire. Yeah, just casually dropping in that those exist, and you might have to deal with them. Just another part of dangerous everyday life in the Underhive. Number two. Necromunda uses daylight savings time. Okay, this next one is from the House of Blades book, but it's not actually about House Escher directly, so we'll count this one as like uh, fact 1.5 or something. Number 1.5. Necromunda uses daylight. Check this story from the first page of the book. Year cycle time saving of the Horologium will be taking place after first night cycle. Time reference Y41K Gamma Hive Primus. Subjects are expected to observe the loss of a cycle with the reverence it deserves, and then make up the time by working twice as hard. For me, I think this is kind of a joke about daylight savings time. Daylight savings time is a practice used in a variety of countries in the real world, where the clocks go forward and backwards at certain times of the year to supposedly make better use of sunlight hours. Many people see it as a negative, which causes a whole host of physical and mental stresses due to messing with the body's natural sleep patterns. It may be thought of as something of a relic that was introduced in the past, and we continue to practice mainly due to tradition. Now, Necromunda doesn't have sunlight, so it's probable that this practice is a tradition taken from the Imperial Administratum, which they probably still practice because Terra used to practice which Terra used to practice, and so is now a tradition, and therefore must be religiously observed forevermore. To me, that is very 40k. Number 2. Escher are drug dealers of the highest order, but they do not get high on their own supply. One of the key strengths of House Escher is their mastery over chems, stims, and elixirs. The unique Escher rules mechanic in-game involves having access to a wide variety of chemicals for a wide variety of uses, some beneficial to you, and some nefarious to whoever you're fighting. I'll be making a tactics type video on each of the Necromunda factions, so be sure to subscribe if that kind of thing sounds good to you. Back in the dim past of Escher's history, before House Escher was even called House Escher, they were known as House Esharki, and they specialised in stims, drugs, and gene therapy. Using these skills, they rose steadily to the heights of power on Necromunda, making many enemies along the way. This came to a head in a war with House Goliath. Not present-day House Goliath. Present-day House Goliath are actually named after these guys because, uh, well, I've got a video about that. 
During this conflict, they deployed waves of, and I quote, combat drug fueled murder squads, ash dancer assassins, and gene enhanced berserkers. Hardcore. The war annihilated House Goliath, and for the next thousand years or so, they indulged and got addicted. Pretty much all of them got pretty much very badly addicted. As time went on, more and more children, especially boys, were born sicker and weaker, until the chems that made them feared were instead all that kept them alive. This became known as the curse of flesh and persists to this day. Near the end of the 39th millennium, a hab-mother named Vodicia led an all-female rebellion against the Ishaki patriarch named Elok Twiceborn. Marching into the High Council, Vodicia found Elok and all the male leaders long dead. The remaining all-women council was unified under Vodicia, and the Ishaki were reborn as House Esher. The lessons learned from this overindulgence are keenly remembered, and even modern-day gangs use chems mostly as weapons and tools to be applied where needed with precision. Escher gangs are described as being very wild and free, and also very individualistic. So I guess Escher must have a really robust drug education program, and strong addiction help for those who want it. House Escher says rehabilitation, not criminalization. Number three. All Escher are female. Kinda. So, the previously mentioned and ominously named Curse of Flesh. To paraphrase, all male Escher are born weak and sickly, and so that's why all the ladies are fighters. Unlike the Goliaths, who are almost entirely born in huge muscly test tubes, Escher mostly make baby Escher the natural way. If it's a baby boy, they will be weak and near death. If it's a baby girl, healthy and strong. There's an order of Escher known as the clan chemists, who function as uh, a clan of chemists. They have in-game rules where they can give your Escher gang cheap drugs and possibly free death maidens. They also function as midwives, and so spirit away any sickly newborn Escher boys to the Patriarchium hospices where they are hooked up to machines and barely kept alive. When reaching maturity, they are, and I quote, harvested for their genetic materials through the esoteric processes of the chemist cults, before dying shortly afterwards. The Escher women go out and fight and murder their enemies and find fame and fortune in the depths of the Underhive, while the Escher men are kept alive in like uh, weirdo hermetically sealed jizz hospitals so they can make baby Escher. This book is kind of vague about the specifics of how the curse of flesh works, but it mentions that this is a chromosome disease, only manifesting in those with XY chromosomes. Now, I failed A-level biology, but I did take it. So, pinch of salt with the following. As far as I can tell, chromosome diseases are a real thing, so that's something. However, the simple idea that XY always gives you a boy, and XX always gives you a girl, and those are the only two options, is basically an overly simplistic and somewhat iffy version of how things really work. Iffy Science and 40k are of course no strangers though, being the setting of cathedral spaceships, chainsaw swords, and green space guy riches. Anyway, science aside, there is also mention of an Escher gang discovering a lost tribe of male Ashaki gene warriors from ages past. Starting point of an erotic fanfiction, or an excuse to model up some unique Escher gangs. You decide. Number four. House ancestor, Atherus Rex, personally fathered 888 sons and daughters. 888? Do you think he got up to like 777, and then accidentally had one more, and then was like, hmm, better have another 110 kids to make the number sound cool? No? Not funny? Ah oh, well, on to the next one. Number 5. House Escher is the oldest of the Necromunda clan houses, and may even predate the Imperium. Imperial historic records of Necromunda, and uh, most places in 40k, if we're honest, are incomplete. What with being an empire of incompetent bureaucracy and demonization of knowledge and all. 
those records that do exist are full of pro-Helmore and therefore pro-Imperial propaganda. House Helmore is the Imperial ruling house of the planetary governor on Necromunda. Incomplete records make much of the past a mystery. House Escher, however, has a strong tradition of oral storytelling. Many of these stories have of course become mixed with myths and legends, but they do give insight into a very long history. The name Escher is only a few thousand years old, but the house's origins begin millennia ago. Before the Imperium of Man and the Great Crusade, the planet now known as Necromunda was named Aranius Prime, ruled by the mysterious Iron Lords of the Aranius continuity. Stories tell of three mysterious warrior women, from this time sisters known as the Blades. House Escher is known as the House of Blades, and uh, the book is called House of Blades, so, you know, yeah, you get it? When the Space Marine Legions of the Great Crusade arrived to bring Arrhenius Prime to compliance, the three sisters recognised the end of their world and vowed to do whatever it would take to survive. They saw the rule of the Imperium and they did what they could to survive it. The sisters, Celestria, Sindrina and Solarana, each created hidden gene banks which produced clones of themselves. As they would age and die, a new, younger version of themselves would step out into the world and take over. To the world at large, their allies and enemies, it seemed like these three were immortal warrior queens. It is because of this that they were able to create epic legends and carve out a position amongst the warring gang lords and the draconian administration that made life hell in the early years of imperial rule. When Martek Helmer of what is now House Helmore began his ascent to rule Necromunda, the sisters saw an opportunity for stability and they pledged their service to the planetary governor. House Escher has existed in some form ever since, adapting, changing and surviving in the oppressive shadow of imperial life, doing whatever they can to keep their traditions and culture alive. Number 6. A Crisis of Creed A full-on religious war breaks out in Hive Temenos after Patriarch Primus accidentally mispronounces Saint Valdor as Saint Valdon. The conflict between the Valdorians and the Valdonians escalates into unspeakable violence, and it is only stopped when the war reaches the Temple of the Emperor Deified. This draws the unfortunate attention of the Order of the Argent Shroud, the Sisters of Battle. They take a hundred thousand penitents as atonement, and they tell the locals to knock it off. You know you're in trouble when you're a little narrative skirmish game, and you mess up so bad that you need one of the mainline 40k factions to come in and yell at you. Number 7. Escher love a good bit of cloning. Earlier in the video, I talked about how the earliest legends of House Escher revolve around the three sisters known as the Blades, and their many cloned lives. They were strong, and they were wise, and their constantly cloned bodies enabled them to live again and again, transcending the limitations of a single human lifespan. As their power grew, however, they realised the folly in attempting immortality. There was too much at stake by keeping their power tied to the three of them, supported entirely by clone banks. The clones were a weakness, and the possibility of accident or sabotage ending their lines forever was too strong to ignore. So they combined their gene pools to make five boys and seven girls, and these twelve children were the bloodline that all Escher claim as ancestors. The sisters, seeing their future in the safe hands of a new generation, destroyed their clone banks and lived out their final natural lives. These days, the head of House Escher is the Matriarch Primus, who holds the title The Ancient and the Young. The current Primus is Queen Adina, one of the youngest to ever rule and someone with far less experience than is usually required of a matriarch. The reason for her position? She's a clone of Queen Vodicea, one of the mythical figures from the early days of House Escher, 
She showed up in uh, one of the previous facts. Number eight, living dead girls. Escher chemistry can do it all. Healthy skin, beautiful hair, big lads grown in test tubes. But can it make angry revenants back from the dead to avenge their own deaths? You bet it can. Escher death maidens are the specialist type of champion introduced in the House of Blades book. Dead Escher gangers reanimated through a combination of industrial strength embalming fluid and pure undiluted hate. They are the creations of the uh, chemists. Ah, uh, sorry, chemists. Discovered after an attempt to improve the healing capabilities of their drugs proved a little too successful, Death Maidens retain their minds and abilities that they had in life. They are immune to pain, but the wounds inflicted on them won't heal, and so they wear veils to hide their horrific scars. They uh, basically work on Death Becomes Her rules. Except uh, Death Maidens have got poison blood. I don't think Meryl Streep had poison blood. Number 9. Escher in space. The vast majority of Necromunda games take place in the depths of the Underhive, but the clan houses do have a presence on the various orbital void stations that service the Hive planet. These are mostly used for the import and export of various goods, although there is a good bit of the old gang warfare going on up there too. Side note, it would be entirely possible to do a full Necromunda campaign in a space station. I've never actually seen it done online. If you've done this, let me know. It sounds really cool. I want to see it. Anyway, they ship out such as all those uh, five credit las guns Escher loves to make, and they ship in all kinds of stuff, including Xenos beasts. Some of these are, of course, black market, but a good deal are sanctioned. It seems that as long as the alien is not sentient, the Imperium will tolerate it to some degree. Escher also loves to crossbreed these weird alien animals, which I'm pretty sure means that Avatar The Last Airbender is canonically in the 40k universe. Some of these Xenos chimeras are bred simply to grind up for chems, while some are used as guards or status symbols. This is one of the reasons Escher gangers adorn themselves with feathers, skins and furs of all different colours, and why your gang can have a, some of those weird lizard cat things running around. Number 10. Debutants of Death Over the aeons, as the house has twisted and changed into what it is today, it has at various points split apart, consumed itself, and generally got all messy like a big old family tree. One such major divergence was back in the 35th millennia, when the house, then known as the Ulandari, split along ideological lines. One half, concerned more with decadence, position, and the finer things in life, became the noble house Ulanti. House Ulanti, as in uh, Mad Donna Ulanti, as in that uh, special character from way back in the day, yeah? The other half believed they needed to keep themselves focused on combat and reckless tomfoolery, and so they descended into the Underhive to become House Athenos. Fast forward several millennia, and House Athenos eventually became House Escher. Escher and Ulanti still quarrel and snipe at each other. I mean politically, although probably literally too. Yet they have strong ties to this day due to their shared ancestry. In fact, House Ulanti sometimes sends its youngsters down into the Underhive to run with Escher gangs as a kind of coming-of-age ceremony. It was during one such adventure that a bunch of young nobles showed up wearing extravagant prom dresses and huge hair, as well as, of course, the type of weapons that you only get by being a spoilt young rich kid. The Escher liked it so much that it turned into something of a tradition. No sense beating your opponent if you can't do it while looking fabulous. So there you go, top 10 facts for the House of Blades. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this more in-depth look at the lore of uh, House Escher. I really enjoyed making this video and I'd like to do some more in the future. I'd really like to cover the other houses and do a lore video on each of them. So if that's the kind of thing you'd like to see, uh, leave me a comment down below and press subscribe and do all that kind of thing. Thanks for watching and see you next time.